Hello, welcome to episode 34 of Animation Station. 34. That's so many episodes. Um, this, ep- <laughs> this episode we review Fern Gully, the 1992 animated feature starring, uh, among others, Robin Williams and Tracy's odd obsession, Tim Curry. Um, it's a lot of fun, so strap in and enjoy. Also, just to let you guys know, we are back on iTunes, and now we are on Stitcher. So if uh, those are better mediums for you to absorb podcasts into your ears, uh, you can find us there now. So, uh, yeah, enjoy. Life is a magic thing. Yeah, yeah. Life is a magic thing. Intro time? Intro time! Intro time? Intro time! That's the time of the day! (laughs) Welcome to another episode of Animation Station. I'm Robbie. Life is a magic thing! I'm Tracy! Yeah. I asked him to do that, so, yeah. It's it's fine. It's it's only moderately spontaneous, so, (laughs) you know, just... (laughs) Slightly... Yeah, I'm having fun, okay? Whoa. I'm allowed to have fun on my own podcast. I, I don't know, Tracy. I think the internet doesn't oh. like anything fun, so... Uh... Oh, I thought you were just going to say, oh, it's because I'm a woman, isn't it? What? Like, I, I, I could play that card, I don't know. It's like the whole thing of like, oh, no, she's she's not talented because she's a woman. And I'm just oh, like, well... oh. <laughs> but Tracy, emails. E- email? E- what? Emails. Email? My, my emails? My leaked emails? My... Things? <laughs> just... My leaked emails? <laughs> They're just recipe for soup. Like that's it. <laughs> just one recipe. Just a singular right across recipe for thousands soup. of emails. <laughs> I've done that thing. Like I've established a new chain letter as opposed to the one that was about the Mrs. Fields thing, where the woman tries to like, yeah, she tries to go to the Mrs. Fields factory and asks like, oh, can I buy the recipe? It's like, oh, it'll be five hundred dollars. And she's like, no, I won't be doing that. So she ends up getting the recipe and then sells it to people for like five dollars as like a big fuck you to the Mrs. Fields dynasty, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> no idea what you're talking. Th- no, about. Th- this was like an adage thing that was passed through my family because my mom like hoards recipes and shit. Oh, of so she one does. of them is yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you've you've met her. You yeah. Would, you would anticipate that. Yeah. Like you've met her once. Uh, oh, <laughs> over the once. over yeah, the fine. over the past okay. 10, 15 years, whatever. <laughs> But no, yeah, like, uh, it, it was one of the recipes that she had was for Mrs. Fields' cookies, and there was, like, this really elaborate, like, chain letter-esque story that was attached to it, all about a woman who is trying to buy the recipe and yada yada yada, whatever, <laughs> so. Like, it's so weird, but it was a very, it, it was very much of its time, and by that I mean the mid-90s, so. How appropriate, since the movie we're talking about is from the early 90s. Indeed. Which, Why don't you go ahead and... <laughs> uh, if you could Sorry. guess from, uh, Tracy's, uh... Life is a magic thing. Yeah, that. I was yeah, going to say yeah. musical outburst, but I was trying to... Acapella! Her acapella outburst. There we go. That's what I was looking for. I could start hand voting if you want. I'm, I have no shame at this point. I, I know. It's fine. <laughs> I've done two incredibly ham-fisted musical numbers, both reprising the exact same section of a song. Uh-huh, the exact same refrain. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I'm sorry, this movie's got Raffi in it. It kind of brought out my inner, Wait, like, five-year-old. Wait, is Raffi in it? Yes! It, we'll, we'll get into that. Like, it's, it's, the, it's the rain sequence song. Like, the, it's raining like magic, it's raining like starlight. That, that whole thing? That's Raffi. Huh. Baby Beluga motherfucking Raffi. Huh. You really didn't know that? No, no dude. Oh, okay. Well, that's, I'm sorry, I'm more brushed up on Raffi's repertoire than you are. Okay. That says a lot more about me than about you. Yes, it does. <laughs> oh, I mean, Introduce I the damn movie. I was going to say, <laughs> we're talking about Fern Gully. Yes, the 1992 weird fairy somehow takes place in Australia, despite the fact that nobody has an accent Zero, movie. zero accents in Australia. It, I, like, my first association with this movie was that I just, um, I watched the VHS for Home Alone so many times that I memorized the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> and like at the same time it's like I never really ended up seeing it until I um went over to my best friend Bridget's house at one point like I was probably mm-hmm. like 8 or 9 or something and then we watched it and I was like oh that's kind of cute so but I hadn't really seen it since then and we rewatched it mm-hmm. I want to get your take on it first though uh well so I remember watching it as a kid and I don't remember like a lot but I know <laughs> that 
the final scene where the villain, this is like jumping way ahead, uh, becomes a giant, like, flame incarnate skeleton. Yeah. Uh, has stuck with me my entire life. Um, it, it, and not it, in like a, tra- not in like a, like a traumatizing way. Um, I just really freaking love it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost so like, cool. um, well, I, I think it probably resonates with you the same way of like, uh, you know, Night on Bald Mountain, the last sequence from the original Fantasia movie, like where the, there's Chernabog, oh. the devil that's rising out of the mountain. Like, I thought it was very Chernabog-esque, if that's even a word, or I'm uh, going, no, but we're making I'm going to force one. it into we're a word, it. that's fine. Yeah, Chir- Chernabogese, I don't know. Co- coined and minted. <laughs> that that we, we will now get residuals from that, so. Oh, thank God, finally. <sighs> The All that sweet, sweet, sweet Chernabog sweet, money. delicious residuals. <laughs> Jesus. All right, let's get back on topic <laughs> for this. We're, it's like, okay, I remember enjoying this movie as a kid, but, like, watching it again brought back a lot of euphoria, and not because of, like, genuinely enjoying it, or not even, like, an ironic thing. It's just so much of its time, and I find that so charming. It, I don't know why. <laughs> you know what? It is. Um, so one thing that I realized re-watching it uh, the other day is um this is so weird uh near the end of my college career when i was finishing up my bachelor's um i think my friend rachel and i rented the movie and rewatched <laughs> it or something um, just because like yeah just, just for the fuck of it okay i mean like she was one of the few friends i had down there at that point and so we hung out and like watched movies and shit so we rented it at one point and we were just like yeah childhood nostalgia and it was a lot of fun and then uh i had forgotten a lot about it and then you know we <laughs> almost it immediately uh well you all know that uh y'all know that i have terrible terrible memory so i don't but that's fair you don't know about my terrible memory really uh not really i mean well, I, I don't know it's just there's some things about you that uh, well, I, I I don't know. Like most of the things that I know that you remember are things that we both have kind of ingrained into our heads. Oh, that's fair. I don't know. That's... I don't know. It's well, I, I guess like I it, I think it just kind of depends on what that particular memory is supposed to be. I uh, I have <laughs> I have nothing to say to that. I'm sorry. I... I, I, okay, like I guess um, my only real basis is like inside jokes, that kind of thing. Like the things that I know that we both know about. Oh yeah. And like I mean, like there, there's other stuff where I'm just like, yeah, hey Robbie, what was the like? What's your parents' anniversary or something? I don't know. I don't. Oh. I don't know if you would know that. <laughs> I don't know my own parents' anniversary. No idea. Like, whatever. I know my mom's birthday, and I know my dad's birthday is in April. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I have a really bad memory. You're trying. That's that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes. I remember some things, but nothing really that important. Like, pub trivia, I'm fine at, but basic math past, like, addition. And, so, like, some, this, and, like... Is, this is interesting. <laughs> They're actually thinking about stopping algebra in high school, basically. Are you serious? Yeah, because it you don't use it. You don't, but, I mean, if there are math majors that want to take it as an elective, that's fine. Well, that's, like, or, like, exactly. kids that want to focus If you know that you it. want to do math, then you go on and keep doing it. But they're thinking about removing it from the curriculum as required because it is, like, among the most useless things you learn. Not to say that Uh, algebra isn't, like, good and important, but it really think about some of the algebraic shit you learn (laughs) and tell me when you use it. Do you use it on a daily basis? Do you even use it on a weekly (laughs) basis? You probably don't even use it on a monthly basis. I'm getting like on a soapbox. Stop box. making nope. assumptions about me, Robbie. I don't mean I'm to. I'm feeling attacked. <laughs> I'm sorry. What the fuck? I have no idea. I was just, I, I was just like, if anything, I think I, we just triggered some PTSD, like <laughs> a, algebra, like kind of flashbacks for you. Like this is your like like algebra was your Vietnam apparently. <laughs> it just it reminds me of that joke in Family Guy where he's talking about algebra and he's like. He gives them this, like, so you go down this street, and then you divide, for, you solve for X, and then you si- find the sum of three sides, and then you do this, that, and then, like, Chris is just curled up on the street corner in a fetal <laughs> position. 
Jeez. I mean, like, there's some, like, truth to that, though. Like, there's no real-world basis that a lot of people would even bother using algebra. Exactly. Like, I, like, I barely passed it. It's like, I thought that, like, geometry was kind of fun because, like, Geometry's... it made a little bit more sense. Like, yeah. But... I, I don't know. I, I just don't think as I don't think that abstractly. Like I've always yeah. been really really bad at math. Like number one, I just don't care, and number okay. two, it's just I I've been more like kind of artistically minded, not in a pretentious way. Just saying, I don't really get math. No, and that's totally <laughs> like, um, that is a thing that I have found to be consistent with people that I've met is that uh, people who are more artistically inclined tend to be better at geometry rather than like algebra or any of that other. Horse yeah, I, we I, are I, so far <laughs> off the reservation right now. I'm sorry. Let's like it's, a, it's okay, Robbie. We're only ten minutes in. They kind of expect it by now. <laughs> trying to steer us back, but it's failing. We're gonna drown in the harbor with all the sirens. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna lull us, lull us over to the rocks with "Life is a magic thing." <laughs> Yeah, girl. Anyway, um, why don't you like? Do you want to get into the story, or I can do it? I feel bad because you always end up doing it. I I don't care. It's up to you, man. Why, why don't you go? Because I've been kind of flapping my gums oh, for a little bit. You're good. So, all right. I'm gonna tr- <laughs> I've been trying to be like really concise in my summary, so I'm gonna do that again. Let's say summarize the entire story in about like four or six sentences. Okay. Just like so, like, like plot one, plot two, plot three, all that. I'll try. Like, so okay. Uh, Fern Gully is a movie about a bunch of fairies, specific in specific, uh, Krista, who live in an Australian rainforest named Fern Gully. She wants to see humans, and like in a weird uh, bit of happenstance, meets one, and accidentally uh, magics him into the size of a fairy. <laughs> you can just say shrinks. Like, I don't she know does, why the word him. shrink. <laughs> fell out of my vocabulary. Magi- and, and Magics was Magic. the first one you thought of. <laughs> I was she's gonna use she's gonna use her tiny little pixie hands to magic him down a size or two. That's exactly what she did though. That's so anyway. <laughs> it's fine. Go, no, no, please so keep through, going. Through their uh growing uh spending time together and growing closer together, uh the human become uh, whose name's Zach becomes more sympathetic to uh sort of environmentalism and they end up having to Zach and Krista together end up fighting slash stopping the logging company, which also involves stopping a personification of pollution voiced by Tim Curry. Hexus. Hexus. Yeah. I love him so much, but I'll get into that later. And that's kind of that, like that, that, think... that's an entire tangent. Oh, it's it's gonna be interesting. <laughs> oh, we're we're gonna get into it, Robbie. Don't 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 you worry. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you never know what he's going to do next. He's so spontaneous. <laughs> that's right. Brave little toaster reference. Well done. Thank you. Uh, I think that's it. I think I hit. Oh, uh, and also, Robin Williams is there, and uh, as a bat. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> that's about I think that's it. the best way to describe it. Both, uh, also, Robin Williams and Christian Slater are there. Why not? Yeah, I mean, it was the '90s. Like, whatever. We we can throw in some Christian Slater. I was I was actually uh, it was funny. I was talking to my friend uh, earlier today about this movie, and I was like, <laughs> "Oh yeah, Christian Slater's in it," and he's just like, "Oh my god, he was." <laughs> and, then he, and then he's like, you know, I don't think Christian Slater always does good things, <laughs> but I really always enjoy Christian Slater. Your friend or you personally? My friend. Okay, because I thought he was awful. <laughs> I mean, no, no, I, I'll, I'll rephrase this. Like, all right, so before I watched this, I watched Heather's about a week prior. <laughs> Like, no, and like, and oh my god, I could not wait for him to die. He was so annoying. I mean, like, it's, like, the, the whole thing is that, like, I get, like, Heather's is supposed to be this kind of, like, the, like, the first blueprint for, like, real stories about, like, uh, teen, like, suicide and gun violence in schools and everything. But, sure. oh my god, I wanted him dead so badly. Like, he was just such an asshole, complete manipulative boyfriend to her. When on a writer who I don't really like on a good day, I was starting to feel sorry for her. Like, with her stupid fucking monocle <laughs> journaling. It's so dumb. Why would she do that, Robbie? It doesn't benefit me. Anyway. Um, but no, it's... Like, uh, uh, his entire character in there, like, the whole thing is that he's supposed to be, like, this kind of chaotic anarchist, and he just comes off like an asshole. Oh, <laughs> I mean, 
anarchists. I get it. Like. Uh, I'm not gonna get on a tangent. About you don't. You don't. You don't, you don't need to, dude. I've I've met a couple people that call themselves anarchists. I'm just like, dude, you just kind of seem like a dick. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's neither here nor there. Like the the fact that Christian Slater is in this to begin with is so indicative of the fact that this took place in the early '90s. Yes. <laughs> and the fact that his character is shirtless and a ginger and a fairy all at the same time. Like so any, and, and he ends up getting into this dick measuring contest thing with Zach later. He where really they're, does. It's so silly because like his name is Pips for God's sake, like Gladys Knight and Pips, Pips, Pips. but um, Pips Blue Ribbon. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, that was too easy. That that was low hanging oh, fruit. So I'm so sorry, I love but. It. Uh, Pips but blue ribbon. Pieps blue ribbon. Um, but no, like the uh, this weird kind of like thing he's got going on with Crystal. Like he's kind of supposed to be her boyfriend or something. I don't know. I don't it's kind sh- of ambiguous. Yeah, maybe so she's like, just like kind of cock blocking him. But uh, like I don't know. Like so, I think that there is some kind of like I think probably before the movie starts, there's some kind of like uh, I don't know if we want to call it like romantic tension, something like that between them. Uh, at least from his side, right? Well, yeah, I mean, they definitely hinted it, because when he's first introduced, it's just after Krista was talking with Maggie, who's this, like, just kind of like if you combined Angela... No, I'm sorry, not Angela Lansbury. Uh, Maggie Smith and a mushroom together and put wings on it. That's, that's what she looks that's like. That's kind of what she looks like. And she's yeah. like this... She's like the... I don't the know shaman. what you want to call it. She's like, like a shaman, I, I mean, would she, say. She's a druid, really? <laughs> If we're uh, doing Dungeons and Dragons we'll, classes, we'll actually, actually, she's, uh, <laughs> actually no. If anything, you should know because you play D anD D. Yeah, she's totally a druid. Okay, then fine. She's a fucking druid. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Robbie, if you're gonna if you're gonna insinuate nerd hate, at least be knowledgeable about the thing you're hating on. God damn it! <laughs> we're gonna isolate our audience even more than we already do. <laughs> I'm sorry, D and D nerds. I promise, I love you. <laughs> he he's one of you. I am. I play. He's got your the... stink on him. Oh, I know. I'm so, no, that's not. Fair. I don't that's actually because I shower daily. Yeah, that's. Oh, see, that's nice. That's just considerate. Um, uh, but so anyway, we were that. talking about Kristen Slater. Um, but no, yeah. So <laughs> like, so, yeah. So like, long story short, Krista is training under Maggie. She's kind of her apprentice, basically. Yeah. Where she's trying to learn spells about how to help plants grow and just rejuvenate the forest basically like this whole thing of like where Maggie goes like she creates life she's kind of like that one um deer spirit thing from princess mononoke but like yes. tiny so but uh yeah like christian slater's in there they're kind of like flirty and everything with each other but krista seems to just be very kind of curious she's almost like ariel because she's got this kind of weird fixation on humans even though she doesn't really know that much about them yeah she's just like very fascinated by what they are and what their purpose is to be around there especially in a place as isolated as where fern gully is so right yeah i think that's pretty good uh yeah, and then Batty shows up out of like nowhere, like literally yeah, he nowhere. Just, he just he's got this flying through. <laughs> he's got the like this little um like there's like a microchip or like some kind of patch thing on his head. It's like an antenna almost. Yeah, it's, it no, it's totally like an antenna. Um, it's like rabbit yeah, uh, ears on a bat's head. I've never seen one that small though, because like they put it oh, on with yeah. like what looks like a medical, just like a medical bandage basically. Maybe, but um, yeah, it's something like that. He's got a full like yellow blonde pompadour basically, so it's, of course it's he looks like a bad undercut. <laughs> like like he had he had like a 90s. fade. No, like he had like a fade, but it wasn't like slicked back or anything. That yeah, kind of it thing. doesn't have the it doesn't have like the uh, the shape. That yeah, it's does. it's not not quite defined, but yeah, it's <laughs> and uh, like Batty shows We're not up and house party here. No, not quite. Uh, he uh, shows up and he kind of he lays out his entire backstory in a rap for some reason because 1992, and yes. um, Robin Williams does the entire thing. I'll be honest, I found his character a lot more charming in this movie than I thought the genie was. Yeah, I don't know why. actually, so that was actually one of the things I I noticed when I was rewatching it. Is so there's two things. So this there's a couple things I want to say. Uh, and by a couple, I mean more than two. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, honey. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so this is actually Robin Williams' first voice acting role, and like there's something I don't know. Like even though he's at this point already like an established actor and comedian, uh, there's something sort of youthful and like energetic in his voice acting here that feels more genuine. I think than. Genie, who's just constantly like, 
Hey, joke here. Joke, 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 joke. It makes Aladdin seem so dated in retrospect because a lot of the things he's doing are references. Yeah, he's just constantly, like, making pop culture gags. Yeah, but, like, and the fact that, is that, like, it's just kind of uncanny. If you took the genie out of certain sections of Aladdin, it wouldn't be nearly as entertaining. Or, like, he's just basically riffing. He's doing a lot of references to things that probably most parents would probably still get, but some of them completely flew under the radar for me. Like, oh, yeah. I, like, I, I didn't get half well, of them. Like, he doesn't have like, a Hall joke, right? And Yeah, I mean, like, parents would get that at that time because that was a pretty big show around that era, but it's get, like it has no basis now. Like, if yeah. he had just kept it to classic actors, it probably would have been better off, but it, it was like um, like Shrek, kind of, like the whole thing of, like, where they try to wedge in a few too many pop culture jokes. Like, the first time was fine. It was actually kind of refreshing, but the farther it kind of gets into it, it just feels kind of off. And yeah. unnecessary, at least within Aladdin. It, I did. I never really felt like that within um, Fern Gully because most of it is just kind of him riffing. Yeah, well, it's riffing, but it's riffing in a more generic way, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just him being sassy. Like, yeah. Well, I think it's more. I think it's more like you said, him being sassy. But I think it's also like we kind of talked about this in a different uh, podcast we did recently. I think it's more of Robin Williams inhabiting Batty. It's more the, like, method acting than the John Malkovich acting, which I don't yeah. know if I've talked about that before. What, going full Malkovich? So. <laughs> I thought that that's just when someone argues something very loudly and very pointedly like that, or. No, no, no. So there's, um, there's obviously more than this, but there's, like, sort of two divides in terms of how actors think about roles. And there's method acting where you're Daniel Day-Lewis and you just dissolve into the role. Heath and Ledger you... as the Joker comes to mind. Yeah, just, uh, he was more. He was also kind of a method actor. Or there's the Malkovich method, which is more that the character comes into me, and now that character is a blend of itself and myself, because I myself as a person also have interesting experiences, which are probably actually more interesting than this character. Oh, like Jack Nicholson, basically. Uh, oh, yeah, like Jack Nicholson he, or... He does that um, a lot. Crap, Meryl, what's his name? Meryl Streep? I don't know. No, um... Oh, D- Dusty? Dustin Hoffman? Uh, Dustin Hoffman probably does it to a lesser extent. No, I'm thinking of the guy who plays Dr. Cox. Oh, John C. McGinley. John C. McGinley. Because if you notice, all his characters have, like... There's something very definite about the way that he talks as a person... That transfers into his characters. Yeah, because you can take his character from Wall Street, and he still has the same kind of delivery and demeanor that Dr. Cox does in Scrubs. Right, it's very exactly. similar. You know, it's not to say that he's a bad actor or anything, it's just that the characters take on aspects of him, as opposed to him becoming the character. And so I think what we see, if we look at Fern Gully and Aladdin, we're seeing those two things happen. So in Fern Gully, Robin Williams becomes Batty, whereas in Aladdin... Genie becomes Robin Williams. Does that make sense? Yeah, I totally get that. It's we're we're in. They're kind of um, when they're choosing the role. If they have someone in mind to do it, they're kind of gearing it more towards certain aspects of their personality. I mean, like even if you look at the character of Pips, he's got um, Christian Slater's weird stare. Like there's that too. <laughs> Perpetual shirtlessness. Like no, well, I'm yeah, and he's also got <laughs> like his hair is basically in terms of the way that it is styled is very similar to Christian Slater's. It's just longer. Yeah, fair. That's fair. And he's just, like, a little more buff, because Christian Slater isn't, like, a super beefy dude. Yeah, like, we could say something like, uh, what about um, Jack Black when he was in Kung Fu Panda? Like, there were certain aspects about Poe's character that oh, were I incorporated, mean, po, like, with... Poe is, ju- po is Jack Black's fursona. Let's be yeah, real bas- here. Yeah, Oh, my God. You're welcome. Holy shit, you're right. No, take it back. Too late! It's out there, and we Dicks. recorded it. There's no taking it back. It's preserved in c- c- cellophane? C- what is it? Celluloid? Celluloid. Celluloid, that's the one. Celluloid? Um, we should get more into the movie. Um, oh. <laughs> let, let, okay, uh, okay. I want to get into... The, uh, this is going to be my topic, because we both Go will have it. things to talk about. There is um, there's a very diverse array of music that's within the soundtrack of this film uh some of it's like kind of nice like sort of atmospheric indicative of the rainforest like some right. of it's mostly like kind of like weird 90s stuff like as i mentioned before raffi's on this um yeah the, the the first title track that i keep singing and i'm not going to do it again i promise uh that was another one that uh i thought was kind of fun there's the baddie rap and then yeah the baddie rap there's, there's 
oh, toxic love. Yeah, then, uh, no, there, there's also the, um, if I'm gonna eat somebody, like, some Might of them have, well like, be you. Yeah, some of them have this kind of weird sexual connotation, definitely toxic oh, love. so that was, that was oh, actually one of the things. Hardcore. Is I guess they had to rewrite toxic love, like, a bunch, because yeah. it just, it was so overt, and they're like, we can't do this. We it's got not enough okay, notes. Tim Curry, and he's like, mm, but I love it so much. Mm. Get you, get you a pizza. Get you a fine pizza. <laughs> no, yeah, like it's th- this whole this. thing of like, look, okay, I had mentioned this off podcast before to Robbie, <laughs> but I feel like there's a certain point within most young women's lives where they find the English actor that they most identify with. For some people, <laughs> it could have been Thomas. Uh, Christian Bale playing Thomas and Pocahontas with some women. It might have been David Bowie in Labyrinth. Mine was definitely Tim Curry as Hexus singing Toxic Love. It's not just the fact that I like the song and thought it was very well done. The actual animated sequence is gorgeous. Very yes. interesting. Hexus is dr- animated beautifully because he's mostly just a smoke monster. This j- just like too hot for TV. <laughs> like, well, yeah. I actually yeah. thought that was really interesting is he's both so he starts out as like just a like a black ooze basically. He, he's just basically like a pile of tar that's yeah. in the anthropomorphic basically. Yeah, like, but well, I thought that of. was really cool and then he shifts to being this giant smoke creature and then again at the end he becomes this giant like oil and fire skeleton with like a drapery of It's so cool. more oil. It's so cool. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> If someone has not put that onto a van at some point, that is a oh, complete that's... wasted opportunity. You understand what we have to do by the time we hit our mid-30s, Robbie? We gotta buy a creepy windowless van and then just paint Hexus as, like, this super, like, weird skeleton thingy and then just, like, drive around the country and solve mysteries. Like, well... if you're if you're not doing anything by the time you turn 35, just call me and then we'll just do it. <laughs> I don't fucking care. Like, I'm sure we'll have time. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we have, uh... Nothing else to do. I don't plan on having children before then, so that's fine. Like, that's fair. Did you have to leave a lull right there? I, I had. <laughs> what do you want from me? Uh, no, no, no. But uh, like, long story short, like the entire thing is that Tim Curry is obviously having so much fun doing this role because oh, he hasn't yeah. really had an opportunity to get into this kind of a like. It's, it's sort of sexualized. It's definitely kind of suggestive. Oh, but, it's super suggestive. But like he's like eating the scenery like how he did when he was Dr. Frankenfurter. But like and I was just like I was like the more I watched him like, oh my god. <laughs> Getting flashbacks of like, oh Jesus, how has no one ever done this as like a like a skit or some kind of sketch or something? Like it would be so perfect. Like to do this as an audition song. <laughs> it's like it, it like I would probably get laughed off the stage where I'm like, I don't care. I did what I wanted. I had a, I had a good time. Oil and grime. <laughs> I don't know. Just it's it's just so interesting to watch. Like the entire song is really cool. Yeah. Like every single like he actually starts panting and moaning. It's super weird. Like oh. it. Like, so. Oh. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, uh, toxic love. It's but it's so great. I mean, yeah, um, it's good. Yeah. What about uh? Your, was there anything that kind of like surprised you within the rest of the movie? Like anything that didn't make sense to you? While you were watching it? Things that didn't make sense to me. Uh, <laughs> it's a loaded question, I know, I'm sorry. I mean, aside from the American accents, which is the only yeah. thing I learned recently. What the fuck? No um, one in this accent has an Australian accent. Yeah, well, sorry, that, no, I mean, no one in this dude, accent, no one in this like, movie has an Australian accent. Like, <laughs> Zach looks straight out of Cal- Southern California. He do. I'm sure that that was deliberate, but they could have very well done that with Australia too, because like Sydney is kind of like a sister city with LA, because oh. they because like uh, most of the most flights that go throughout the U S. happen to go through LAX. Like there right. are some that will come from other cities, but predominantly <laughs> most flights that go directly to Sydney are from mm. LAX. So it wouldn't that shock makes sense. me. Like he's definitely very much a surfer dude. Like everything yeah, about but him he's just like he's like he's sixteen and he has an Australian ID. So like I think I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, like, he 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 lives outside of Sydney. It's super weird. Like they never really address like why they don't have accents. Like none of the other workers do either. Like one guy no, has a Brooklyn they, accent. Yeah. The other guy is just the living embodiment of like basically like a lumberjack combined with I don't know like a cake basically. <laughs> That's what he is. I got threaten your life. 
<laughs> hey, Tone, you think the Levla can handle this, baby? Like, I was starting to get uh, flashbacks of that one sale, uh, that one, like, sleazy salesman guy from The Simpsons. Ah, look at the back of this Krusty doll. Someone said it to evil. Like, that guy? <laughs> like, the blue haired salesman, yeah. whatever his name is? Yeah, I get like, that. just. I don't think he ha- He doesn't actually have a name, that character. I, I, I think one of them is Tony, and then is the other one, like, Lou or oh I don't oh yeah those two guys I don't remember their names I I, I know Zach says them at one point but like the only one I really remember is Tony just cause... Uh, yeah because it, it's because it's the first he always yells Tony yeah like the way he yells Guys! it is just so it's so weird it just it sticks in my mind I I can look it up but I don't really care that yeah, much it's, it's not that <laughs> what's yeah. interesting is so you've got those do du- that duo who just hangs out in the giant log machine all the time <laughs> and somehow it's not cheech and cheech and chong who are in this movie they are they're the two like beetle people thingies yeah they're those, like, two, they're those two they're those two weird they're... beetles that hang around with christian slater yeah like it's that's about it oh it's ralph one of them is ralph oh anyway sorry ralph that has nothing to do with anything that's yeah it. ralph and tony um, sure. that's actually another th- so there's a couple things that stuck out to me in this movie watching it again uh, that I really enjoyed, and one of them was the fact that there's just they really got super experimental with what a fairy is. Yeah, because you got like on the one end you've got Krista, who is like she's basically like goth Tinkerbell, basically. Uh, I, mean, I mean, like she she's almost. got like a she's got like a different kind of color scheme. She's got this very super eighties hair, like yeah, teased she's got like shit. Super oh 80s, my god, she's nearly got like teased oh, out she, hair. She's got, like, Oprah hair from, like, that weird kind of, like, late 80s, early 90s phase when it was, like, super bouffanty and, like, kind of rounded out. Yeah. That um, sort of thing. And then she's got this weird sort of, like, torn chest and hip piece. Yeah. Um, she's kind of dressed like a whore. I don't know why her dad lets her go out like that. I mean, did you see her dad? He wears a belt. Yeah, and I I like her dad's hair because like he's got he kind of looks like a walrus, no but he's sense. he's got like little giraffe horns in his hair. Like, how do they stay up like that? Uh, yeah. How was it? Cut well, that's what that I mean. Way? So that's the thing, right? You've got Krista, who like very obviously humanoid, just tiny with wings on one yeah. end. Yeah, and then you've got on the other end, one of the minions is literally a tiny turtle shell with eyes and an arms. It was cute though. Oh, I like, loved him. I I, I like that squeaks. one. He was yeah, my I like that. He just squeaks. And one of them was like this. I don't know if he was supposed to be like a snail or something, but it had like a super long tongue and he licked everything. Yeah. I was like, what's the purpose of that? <laughs> Why? Like he was he he was wearing like a little like nautilus shell on top of his head. Like uh-huh. the entire thing was just like that entire group. It's like it seems like the kind of people that would be okay with hanging out with Pips. Well, I mean, that's totally that's totally like the the misfit gang of losers. Yeah. Smoking pot outside the high school, right? Like that's those guys. <laughs> I don't need to go to school. I'm gonna get a job at the gas station. <laughs> I don't and know, hey man, but those guys yeah. are fun to hang out with in high school. That's like in, all I in have. high school, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> There's a threshold here. <laughs> but no, I, I get what you mean. Um, like, did you think it was weird that they decided to set it in Australia, or did it kind of make sense? Because I mean, actually, <laughs> shit. Get. Well, no, I should know. Given the time frame, this would have been perfect because remember the the hole in the ozone layer that w- got mentioned a lot during like public service announcements and like news things. It was a thing. Yeah, like, you backing... saying that reminded me that that was a thing. I don't. Yeah. But that's it, though, right? Like, I remember okay, well, it's, that it's people since, talked about a hole in the ozone layer. <laughs> it's since gotten better, but, like, it, I think the probably the rationale behind them doing it in Australia in the first place is because the hole in the ozone layer happened to be roughly around that section of the Southern Hemisphere. Oh, okay. Like, I think that that might have had something to do with it. Um, no, that would make but, sense. And, and also the fact that, like, there's New South Wales and Queensland, like, there's a lot of jungle kind of area around there, a lot of which was getting taken... Uh, or like being destroyed to make, uh, you know, for both like logging and for housing developments at that time. Right. Like it kind of depended um, because of like you know suburban sprawl, but probably not to that extent. But still, like right. logging is definitely a big industry around there. Oh yeah. Well, and that was um. So the animation studio, or at least the Australian, I guess it was a joint American and Australian venture. Mm. Um. And I guess the Australian wing actually like went to those rainforests and like so that scenery is very well done basically yeah like the, i think the color scheme it fluctuates uh somewhat but 
overall, the actual like uh, like the actual settings are really nice. The oh, only yeah. thing that I notice is that there's a lot of inconsistencies with some of the paint palettes that they use for characters like Krista and uh, Pips and for Batty. Like I think some of it has to do with lighting, but the rest of it, it's like Krista goes from being kind of like a little pale to being almost blue to being pink again. Like it fluctuates a lot. I, I don't know if that was deliberate, but... I guess it, I didn't notice it as much in this movie. It, it, it's... I, I don't know if it was, like, on purpose. Like, it could have just right. been because of, like, whatever lighting that they were going for. But her color palette changes so frequently. It's really just kind of uncanny for me. That's um, fair. I, I, I might be overthinking it. I don't know. It wouldn't be the first time, but... That's Like, fair. I don't know. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, but, um... Yeah, mm-hmm. like, it, it even takes place at Mount Warning, which is in Australia. Like oh, it's an actual, know. it's an actual mountain. Yeah, I didn't within know a, that that was an actual thing. I thought that was just yeah. like movie talk. <laughs> it, it, because of the fact that it's called Mount Warning, it's called, which yeah, sounds, it's called Mount Warning, w- w- which just seems like terrible, terrible. Well, it's like, <laughs> like script writing. It's like, well, yeah, it's like, hmm, where is the, where does the evil sorcerer live? Mount Doom. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Where, where can we Good go job, find the JR. Real subtle. <laughs> Where can we go find the elixir of life? Oh, you'll need to go over there towards dark, spooky alley full of lava way. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like, the, the more ridiculously specific that they can get, the better. Yeah, like, exactly. I mean, it's just really funny. Yeah. Um, the ones no that don't even try are my favorites. Oh, yeah. It's like, uh, Mount Evil Doomness. <laughs> Mount Evil Lair. <laughs> It's it, is this starting to get into Aqua Teen Hunger Force? I mean, Gentlemen, behold! <laughs> Corn! I have lost weight! <laughs> <laughs> but, anyway. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that there's a lot of things with this movie that do work, but the overall message is just so muddied. Like, it doesn't really make sense, really. I think it doesn't... I think it just doesn't hit in some ways... And I think, I was thinking about this uh, recently, the last day or two. I think one of the things that sort of muddies the waters of this movie for me is there's this sort of weird, like, romantic tension that really feel. I mean, it, it doesn't feel totally, like, just hammered in. But at the same time, it doesn't feel supernatural. You know what I mean? Do you, you mean the thing between Zach and Krista where yeah, they're doing Zach that? Krista, they're sorry. doing that like that so super like that super weird like slow motion run through this like underground cavern. Yeah, it's just like I believe that that like that whole thing. It's yeah. super it unnecessary. Like they're yeah. literally prancing through this area. Yeah, and I think I think one way in which they could have like avoided that that they didn't. I think they didn't hit it hard enough. Is it felt to me. Like, there is some resist Because Zack kisses her, right? Yeah. And there fe- it feels to me, and this could be just me impressing on the character, that there's, like, a bit of resistance from Christo. Like, she's just not sure about it. Yeah. Right? And I think it would... I think it could have gone a long way to have her, like, more sort of firmly deny that. Without yeah, I mean... Being, like, if without she being is... harsh. Because I think that she is, like, s- just super affectionate. Yeah, I think so, too, because, like, if she really was kind of, like, uh, really resistant and turned off by it because of her history with Pips, like, again, I don't know if there's a real serious relationship kind of linked to that. She just seems kind of casually flirty with him. But, like, obviously he gets jealous later. But oh, yeah. it's like, there's not really a whole lot of chemistry that happens between Krista and, and Zack, nor, no, we and don't, don't, like, we don't really need it, too. Like, it just no. sort of seemed like, this is expected, so we're gonna have this put in there. No, like, I think It's like, the, she's, like, she's young and cute, she should have a love interest. Yeah, like, I think the chemistry that does exist between them is, you know, to, like, someone showing another person things they didn't know, right? Like, showing someone how to appreciate something they didn't even realize was there, right? And that's that doesn't have to be romantic. That can just be like friends. That's the Pocahontas fine. principle. Yeah, sure. And like, there's not really any purpose with, to ha- having them fall in less love. Racial, awful racial overtones. And slightly less creepy, kind of pedophilic interests either, because well, Pocahontas is actually super young, and John sh- Smith was super gross and very hairy. Well, um, yes. yeah, I mean, it was you know the English listen, during that time. Listen, the British in. Uh, what was that? The sixteenth century. Sure. Yeah. Not not super attractive. No, no, not great. 
And especially, well, let's not beat that drum. Anyhow. We don't, we don't need to. Um. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just tired. You no, know, the sound you made just sounded like you were fighting vomit. <laughs> let's not do it. Oh, no. No, oh, God. No, <laughs> no it's, you don't need any ADR of me vomiting, but if you want it, there you go. There it is. You're Enjoy. welcome. So, yeah, what else? Uh, just... How about, like, there's this weird kind of usage of CGI that's in there. Like, it's yeah. not very subtle. Like, they use it for the <laughs> leveler, obviously. There's some sequences with birds. Were there any characters in particular that stood out to you a lot? Because I kind of fell in love with both Batty and Hexus when I was watching this movie again. Like, I remember loving them as a kid. Like, I had done this, um, when I was, like, super young, my, uh, brother and our neighborhood, or these kids in our neighborhood, we would put on plays and stuff, a couple of them that I wrote, because I was a huge dork, and I still am today, like, and one of the characters was, like, I had, um, this, uh, do you remember the book Stella Luna? It was a children's book back in, like, the nope. 90s, that was, uh, okay, there was this children's book about a bat that ends up, like, falling oh. into a nest of birds and gets raised by the birds, um, and she doesn't really know how to fly and everything. Like, the, yeah, it's really cute. Um, but the, I had this plush of Stella Luna, the little bat character. And I had tied it on, to a string onto a pole and used it as a prop or like a character in one of the plays that I made. And I named it Batty Coda because I love Batty so much. Like, That's I just great. thought he was, I just thought he was a really cute character. And I just blatantly stole it to use in my stupid play when I was like <laughs> six. I don't know, it was, it was a good time. But I saw right, the so poster I'm, that I drew. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna throw two things in there. One, that's adorable. Uh, Thank you. When my <laughs> nephews were really small, they wanted to put on puppet shows whenever they visited my parents' house. That's awesome. And that your story just then made me think of that. Oh. Um, they were probably substantially less uh, thought out than your own, uh, but they were adorable. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, like, look, dude, people people can try to, like, knock the Muppets, but if it wasn't for the Muppets, we wouldn't have Muppet Treasure Island, which was starring Tim Curry, who wouldn't have gotten the lead if it wasn't for his excellent voice role within this film. Boom. We're going with it. Yeah, uh, the fine. Other that's, thing is... that's my line of logic. <laughs> Mic drop. Peace. Oh, man, those things are really expensive. Yeah, don't drop that. <laughs> um, oh, Greg. Um, the other thing, yeah. <laughs> the other thing is, I agree. I actually loved Bat. I remember enjoying Batty as a kid, and then I remember uh, I can't remember if I how I felt about him when I watched it in college. But again, like watching it again now, I really enjoy his character a lot more than I think I did when I was a kid, uh, because some of the jokes are just I actually get them in a different way. Yeah. And also, like again, that contrast between this movie and Aladdin, where he's just like going hard. And just, like, chucking jokes at you. I think he's charming as hell. Like, just, like, going... Oh, he going, absolutely is. Like, the, the, there, there are certain, like, lines that he has that are definitely kind of shoehorned. Like, they're just sort of preachy. But a lot of the jokes that he has, like, the whole thing where Chris is trying to transform him back into his regular size. And he ends up going through a bunch of different animal transformations. And he's like, oh, oh it's Darwin's grab bag. <laughs> that's a good one. My I was favorite, like, that was adorable. Easily one of my favorites is still just the, uh... He made some joke about... They, someone said something about humans. He's like, humans don't do that. Humans wear, have big butts and wear big, goofy <laughs> pants and go, Hi, Helen! <laughs> that was great. It's just so weird and goofy. I love it. And that he's super freaked out about trying to go near them. Like, the, the yes. whole backstory that they give for him within a rap, like, it is kind of cheesy and hokey, but... I love how it's animated, like, the whole sequence where, like, he sees a bunch of the fairies that are up in the branch, and he says the line, toys in the attic, which is a, like, euphemism for being crazy. Like, right. there's really, like, nice fluid animation, the lighting is really cool, just the idea of having him do it within the tree that restricts the lighting mm -hmm. made it look really nice. Yeah, like, and that's I, actually, yeah, that's go ahead. actually one thing I give this movie, Rewatching it, I was, like, floored by how smooth uh, some of the animation was. Especially uh, facial expressions. Yeah. And uh, forest animals. I loved yeah. the forest animals in this. The uh, Yeah, I, I love the when they're playing the, um, uh, was it like Land of a Thousand Dances? Like that sequence where they find his Walkman and start playing it. I, I don't that know if that is, was one of... Which it, song that is? 
I, I think that that's what it, it was like. The na 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 na. I think it's called La- think Land so. of a Thousand Dances. I'm not 100 percent sure, but the animation that they had for the wallaby or the kangaroo that was dancing was yeah. really really cute. Uh, I don't know. Was this one of the first inclusions of popular music into a children's film before like the Shrek movies kind of made it happen? Because now every single Disney movie has a pop song that's incorporated. <laughs> and like, granted, this is a much older kind of song. But one that wasn't originally written for it is like right. Like, but it's, it's also like like the fact that Zach even listens to that song to begin with is kind of charming because I I really like music like that. You know, oh yeah, like I kind mean, of kind of like because, oldies. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's what I grew up on, right? Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, so I think there's something I don't know. I obviously can't make like a any kind of. I just wonder what it was about that particular song that they decided to go with. So. I don't know. I think it's just like a fun song. I, I don't know if, th- I mean, I don't remember if it was that song specifically, but I think it was just a, it was kind of like a fun song. And it also is the kind of thing that like, because remember Zach is doing, he's listening to this tape player while he's like marking trees. And to so he's probably like taken dance- down. <laughs> well, yeah, but like, he's probably like dancing around and marking trees as he goes. And so I think they were looking for something that you can easily like just sort of zone out while you listen to it and also, like, be doing something that isn't just dance. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I get that. Where, like, he can just kind of, like, while he works to it, it's just, like... I mean, it's peppy and energetic enough because, granted, yeah. it's got to be really tedious work. You're out in the middle of the jungle and you got to mark these trees to be demolished. There was, um... Oh, God, what was it? There was that one scene where Pips and Zach are just kind of starting, like, when they're doing their dick measuring contest thing, where uh, Pips is like, well, we'll show you a taste of real Fern Gully life, unless you're not up to it. And Zach does, like, the whole thing of, like, like the bitch please hand her. He's like, I, I can take anything you dish out, bud. Like, yeah. I love how that thing was animated. It was so cool. Yeah. Like, it's just, like, really good, uh, very quick gesture movement that I really like. Mm-hmm. And they've got kind of restricted, like, facial animation, too, where it's just, like, just, like, one glare. Like, they can really make a good glare within this yeah, movie. Definitely. Batty does it a lot, too, so. Ah, oh, Batty. So good. There was, there's one other thing that I wanted to, like, kind of get into. Um, like, within the finale, the whole thing of, like, the fairies creating this gigantic gas tree, <laughs> there's this one lighting sequence thing where Zach, uh, he sees that there's still an opening for the tree, and he tries to leap into it. I don't know why, and this is probably my own sick sense of humor, I secretly wish that the tree would have, like, sealed up when he was halfway through it. <laughs> <laughs> just, He's like, just killed stuck. Him. Just, like, and, like, either he gets stuck in the tree or he gets killed, basically. I'm just like, yeah, because like, he does this super exaggerated slow-mo jump, like, huh, to get into the tree, and it always bothered me. I was just like, I wish he just didn't make it. Like, I, I don't think that he would be the first one to get affected by Hexus anyway. He's only going to go after the fairies, so he's not really in that much danger. <laughs> I have no like, idea. I, 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 mean, I think he would have been worse off if a falcon tried to eat him, basically. Like, I mean, yeah. You know, like, in, like in Five Goes West or something. He gets swooped. But basically, yeah. Or like if that weird, like, sexy lizard comes back and tries to eat him. <laughs> Any so. friend of... I love that lizard. Yeah. He's probably... Uh, that... So I have some... Oh, that was actually a thing I wanted to talk about. What? So oh. I actually don't super love the music in this movie. Yeah, um, that's fair. But it's I have very some... hit and miss. Yeah, one. Well, I think it has. It all. Ha- it tends to have like a very weird cadence. But <clears throat> I actually love the lizard song. <laughs> um, he's my favorite. But yeah, I think I just have some issue with the composer, uh, which is Alan Silvestri. Really? You know, he did the soundtrack for Forrest Gump too. See, I don't remember much of the music. The only uh, he did the he did the theme the feather thing like the yeah. um the opening and the swelling thing afterwards where he like says bye to Jenny and everything rat and bar Jenny no so he also did uh the only memorable music in my mind that he's done was uh Back to the Future yeah accurate he did the Back to the Future theme that's fair and then he's also done and this is where I would hammer him if I were in the mood to do so <laughs> he also has done some work on composing themes for. Captain America, the first Avenger and the Avengers films, which, uh, not terribly interesting. I mean, you know, there's a great video that's all about how the Marvel movies have no real distinguishing music. Yeah. Did you show that to me? Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know if you did, but I was just like, yeah, that's, I would highly recommend looking it up. I think it was by, um, I don't know if it was by, was it Everfair in Painting? I think so. 
But yeah, that's he does this excellent thing that's all about the importance of theme and how like people don't know how to feel during an Avengers movie or during a Marvel movie because well, not even that, not even that. Well, it's, it's like the soundtracks the, are just so similar. Like there's yeah, not really it's, what he's more kind of bang, like ang- what he's more sort of like frustrated about is they're not taking any risks. So yeah, the it's one just noise. Yeah, it's just it's mostly background noise that like. A sad scene happens. You get sad music. A happy thing happens. Happy music. A funny thing happens. Funny music. And, like, there's one moment that, like, the music is very memorable in the scene, but he even points out, like, in that scene, it's ruined by talking. Unnecessary talking that tells us things we could have figured out, you know, if we had a damn brain. Yeah, I, I think that, it wasn't that the scene in, um, I think it was Winter Soldier where he's going through the, uh, His like, museum. museum or whatever. Yeah, where yeah. they're playing, like, this really interesting atmospheric kind of music that's all, like, very kind of pro-Americana and everything. But there's just voiceovers everywhere about, like, just being like, during this time, the, the, you know, Captain right. America was... Captain spe- America was in World War Two. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, awesome, great. Now I know his entire history. Great. Now I know things I knew because I watched another movie. Now I know, and knowing is half the battle. Um, Knowledge power, go Joe. Anywho, (laughs) but yeah, like I, I, I get where you're coming from. Like there. There's aspects about this soundtrack that just don't really work. Um, I mean, if you're referring to score, I can definitely get that. I think that there were more of like some of the pop songs were so cheesy, but oh, I still totally. found them. But but I still found them kind of cute or like at least endearing because of that. Where it wasn't quite to like the Phil Collins level of like Tarzan, which I know that we brought up before. <laughs> But like the whole thing of like where he literally describes what what the characters are feeling like. I mean, so small. like it's it, it's very literal. But they don't really do that as much. It's just and kind yet of. I love it so much. I get that. I mean, like there, uh, I I love the first few songs within. You know, like the Son yeah. of Man and Two Worlds One Family are great. But it's just um, I I I don't know. I I find it just kind of funny where songs are just very explicitly laying out how you should be feeling. Yeah, like. that's like it's very it doing that is very like condescending like I'm not sure if you get what's going on here. It's very complex. <laughs> it's it's super childish and like dis like I don't know, just to have that little faith within your audience is just so shitty to me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just agree. I'm just like we're a lot more perceptive than you think. It's like we yeah. can kind of tell when we're being talked down to. So maybe don't or if you're going to do it, do it in like an ironic kind of way so that it's kind do of like it a wink in the goddamn privacy of your own fucking home. <laughs> Or do it like how they did in Lego Batman, where, like, the entire first song is just super self-aggrandizing and ridiculous. <laughs> it's great, but, um, but no, I, I totally get where you're coming from. Did it feel long to you at all, the entire movie, or... I think the, I think the different act breaks were a little bit inconsistent. I there's, think there's, there's definitely... There's a like big a... jump where, like, Chris is like, humans did it, humans did it all, but, like, before then, she and Zach were gallivanting about, and just, like, yeah. it, it cuts very quickly. <sighs> I don't know, like, there, there's definitely some weird, like, drags in that movie for me. Yeah. Um, and most of it is, like, the Zack and Krista romance stuff. Yeah, if they just kind of downplayed that and made it just kind of more about him understanding how things were going. Because, like, admittedly, Krista is pretty oblivious for a good chunk of it. Oh, where, like, it, like, like, the whole thing of, like, him just going, like, you are one bodacious babe, where she's like, oh... Cool. I don't know what like, that means. Great. It's like I would be super uncomfortable if I really knew what the context of all yeah, this was. Right. Like I would be really it's uncomfortable because like, you're hitting on me. Yeah. Like, sexual harassment that. wasn't really a thing until 1993. <laughs> so I guess this is okay for now. But like, you know, th- there weren't enough court cases passed just yet. So, but we had Anita Hill to thank for that. Like the Clarence Thomas versus Anita Hill thing with the sexual harassment deal. Anyway. I'm really oh. showing... I, I've watched way too much VH1. I'm so sorry, everyone. But, yeah, I, I just think overall it's just a kind of fun romp. It's just... It's an it interesting is. kind of movie. I don't know if it's terribly rewatchable, but there are definitely things to like about it, and it's just kind of based off of the strength of some of the leads that they have. Or yeah, at least the supporting like, characters, I should say. Like, yeah, Hexus no, and Batty the... are fantastic. Pips is th- pretty fun. Yeah, I think overall, like... You know, knock these actors all you want, but at the end of the day, like, it actually ended up being a pretty strong cast of voice actors, like... Yeah. And, like, weirdly, like, sort of, I want to say, like, weirdly star-studded, not entirely, but kind of. 
It was certainly like stars of that kind of time because I. Oh well, I yeah, it's absolutely like. Because <laughs> I early nineties stars. That, Here you go. I, I didn't really know who the voice actress that played Krista was, or the guy that played Zach. But I Same. looked up. Um, I looked up Krista's actor, and apparently she was Courtney in American Psycho. Where I know this doesn't really mean that was to Robbie, but like if you've Correct. ever seen American Psycho, she was the one who was constantly on lithium, and that. Patrick Bateman was uh, seeing, or like you know, is like sleeping with basically, even though he was engaged to somebody else. Like it's just the her, her character is hilarious because like she falls asleep at a restaurant, and doesn't even realize where they are. Oh god! Like it, she's so hopped up on lithium, she has no idea what's going on. I, I thought it was funny to like recognize that, and now if I wanted to, if I wanted to like go back and take footage of Fern Gully and then intercut it with audio from American Psycho, I could do that. Oh god! Like, I, I think that would be that would be a good time. Why? Why have we in, given her this power? In case I don't see you, have a great Easter, okay? Like just, and then she just passes out immediately. I don't know. I just, I, I need to show well, you that boys movie. And girls, like, I, I don't Trace honestly. Is making some YouTube poops. I, I would Get love ready. to make YouTube poops. I love them. I know. Crazy Gaston says no to no one. It's so good. <laughs> But, like, seriously, Robbie, I don't know how you've known me for this long and you've never seen American Psycho. I, frankly, I feel like a bad friend if that's where this has gone. So, that's, uh, that's my issue. And whenever, as soon as you get back here, we'll watch it, because I think you will love it. It's hilarious. Huh. Oh, no, I remember who I showed it to, and he did love it. So, it was a friend of mine came to visit me at one point and we watched it, so. Grand. He loved it. It's very much of its, uh, it, it, Again, it it's makes... a product of its era. Well, no, I mean, like, American Psycho makes fun of the 80s so oh, yeah. appropriately. It's yeah. so good. But, um, and also you just, you get to see Christian Bale pontificating about the importance <clears throat> of Phil Collins while he's about to record group sex with two prostitutes he hired. Lovely. <laughs> it's so, amazing. You will love it. I, um, I think but there's yeah. no better place for us to end than... Than right here. <laughs> than, uh, that... Why do I always have to have the awkward... I always have to end with the awkward sign-offs, don't I? I think it's kind of It's sort of my thing at this point. If I don't, then I feel disappointed. It's it's part of the shtick. Like, I've let him down, you know? Those kids are counting on me. I can't let him down. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, this is going to be like a long story short thing, but thank you guys so much for your patience and everything with us. We've, We've finally gotten a better recording schedule down so yes. we're hoping to get these out every couple of weeks we've got a couple um yeah, so guest actually, spots coming up hopefully yeah. and um just like any more requests stuff like that please just lay yeah, it on us throw it anything because we're we've, <laughs> we, we've we've got a couple of scrapped episodes but one of them was my fault and the other one was because the movie was too boring so wow. um yeah we we try we were going to review Redline. I just I couldn't do it. I'm sorry. Here's the I, th- here's the thing. I I'm not <laughs> gonna say we should record on it. I'm saying just try and watch the final like half hour. Really? It's a fu- it's a trip, man. And like okay. I I have some questions Ab- about I need to, the movie. Or I, I, I need to talk to someone about the last like especially the last ten ten ish minutes of that movie. I just I. I have some issues. Oh, okay. I, like, I mean, I'll I'll give it a try. Like, it's the only movie that, like... Well, what I'll say is this. Your issues with it fall away at that point. Okay. All right. Because at that point, like, in the last, like, half hour, it's just the race. Right? No, and, and that's the thing. I think that that was my biggest thing is that there's just that such a lag of... kills you. It, it, you no, because, like, the thing is there's such a lack of story because it's bookended by two interesting races, apparently. I didn't actually finish the whole thing. It's the... I know you didn't. No, I... I, knew I, it. I, I no, we got into a huge, <laughs> like, kind of thing about it because, yeah. like, it's the only movie that I was just, like... I... <laughs> I we, we got into, like, this kind of texting thing about it where I just, like, um... I, I, I told him that like off about this movie for well, like no it's <laughs> like because they're the characters are so vapid like for me it's really important for me to have at least something about the characters that I like and it's just like they right. kind of they keep piling shit onto you I'm like I don't care about these people I don't care what happens in the race like it's just like th- th- that's kind of my thing like that that's just yeah. sort of like what holds me up with something where like if there's nothing that I can identify with and it's just like I, I, okay, my biggest thing was that I just thought it seemed like such a wasted amount of talent because the animation is unbelievably oh, it's gorgeous. So good. It's so gorgeous. It's one of the most and, visually 
cute. Looks like eye candy. Yeah, and and that's the thing because the it, the entire movie took seven years to create. It's crazy because of that amount of artistry and detail. Like how they managed to get such fluid animation within Cars blows my mind. But long story short, the reason I didn't want to review it was just because I couldn't get past how boring the characters were and how much they tried to keep shoehorning in more plot that didn't really make a difference anyway because it's just kind of like oh it totally doesn't so this yeah, is the, again, like, yeah, yeah, because yeah, because you watch the last half you, hour because you saw the end matter. of it, and it doesn't matter. It's, it's just, just like it's so funny. And, like it, to me, that's like the same thing as like if they do like the whole thing, of, like oh, it was all a dream at the end of it, and I'm like, that's such a kick in the penis. So, it, it, <laughs> like, so I mean, so to so me, it's not it, it's not as galling as that, but trust it's me, just pretty watch. damn close. I like mean, okay, okay, I'll, I'll watch the last thirty minutes and I'll get back to you. Yeah, because, like try and get try and watch the last thirty minutes because at the very least. I just want to like you and me to sort of hash it out because I think it'd be amusing <laughs> for us, okay. even if we don't record it. I, you um, know, we could do it as like a mini episode. The more a mini think about it. Like, like we're like, I, I'll just be like, look, I'll be completely honest with you guys. I only paid attention to about forty-five minutes of this movie. The rest is utter dog shit. I couldn't it's, finish it. It starts with Tracy going, "Listen, guys, I fucking hate this movie." <laughs> Like, and that's I want to. I'm just. I'm just gonna be saying there. Like, I want to set the record straight. I think this movie sucks ass. But <laughs> there's two parts of it that are really good. <laughs> but the first half, of, the first fifteen, and the last forty five, great. Everything else, dog shit. <laughs> and that's the whole thing. It's like I can't turn my brain off to just be like style over substance. So I'm just like, no, it has to be both. If there's this much work going into it, <laughs> give me a reason to give a shit. Like, yeah, that, that, again, that, that like, was. I mean, that was my biggest thing about it. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, so God. not to not to belabor the point on uh, a different it. movie that we're not even reviewing. <laughs> oh no, we'll get back into it. But like this well, is just kind of like th- this will explain like we are, how we were supposed to have another episode done, and well, it's just so, yeah. kind of it's become a lost episode at this point, mostly because I lost my will to give a shit about doing it. <laughs> so <laughs> like I don't I don't know whatever, <laughs> but um yeah <laughs> no I'm Jim Curry. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, Mr. Monk, so good to see you again. <laughs> I trust you're hungry. I've made a casserole. Fatima to the hot shell. Ah. They call me mad, insane, <laughs> Wendell. <laughs> it's so good. Watch Freakazoid if you're listening to this. Oh my god! If you okay. made it this far, please watch Freakazoid. It's so funny. Oh my god! So I think we're ready. I yeah, we're done. I think Put we're a fork done. in us. We're done. Uh, but now let's let's finish this beast out, Robbie. Where can <laughs> they find your fine ass? Well, you can always find me at lobster underscore writer on Twitter. Tracy, where can they find you on the internet? You can find me on, uh, both on Instagram and Twitter at TC Troush. Yeah. Oh, also, if you have any interest, we are on iTunes. I've updated the feed, so you yes. should be getting our more recent items. Thank you so much for... We got a big bump in uh, traffic recently because I updated the feed, so people were <laughs> finally able to find our episodes again. Um, and it looks like people are really digging the BoJack episode, which is great. Just, uh, if you have any interest, please leave us a review on there. Five stars would be awesome. Four stars is cool. Three stars is like an Applebee's. You know, it's functional, but not really something that you would look <laughs> forward to going to. Why'd you even listen this long if you don't like it that much? Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's a fair assessment. Like, two stars is long John Silver's, where it's like, you know exactly what you're getting, but you still get sick anyway. Um, and then one star has got to be like Arby's, because nobody wants to be there. Um, and no, that's no. A, if, it's just so you feel about one the podcast. One star is uh, Hardee's. Oh, God. No, that's fair. That's very There's fair. There's nothing else you can do. You just got to bear down. <laughs> It's like you have to somehow manage to get as much grease and ketchup onto that beast as possible so you can slide it down your gullet and live one more day. That's what Hardee's is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't own any Hardee's stock, so I'm fine with admitting that. (laughs) (laughs) But um, yeah, that's, I mean, if you have any interest, please give us uh, any ratings, uh, notes, comments, whatever on iTunes. Absolutely. We'd love um, to talk to you. Yep, yeah, please do. Uh, just shoot, contact us anytime. Like, we're surprisingly very gregarious people. So, <laughs> um, and uh, if there's uh, any interest, uh, I think we're still going to try to get these up onto YouTube just to make it a little bit easier for people to find. I've had a couple requests from people to do that. So, thank you as always for listening. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll talk at you next time. Yep, much appreciated, y'all. Take care now. Bye. Bye. Brief note from the editor, Tracy.
Uh, it's not odd. I just happen to think that Tim Curry is a very talented character actor. And as such, I'm going to be playing the entirety of the studio version of Toxic Love, which is so uncomfortable. If you think that he wouldn't start making gross noises concerning pollution, um, you'd be wrong. He does that within 10 seconds of the song starting. There's a particular line within the song that he's basically stating that pollution makes him horny, and it astonishes me that this ever got past the demo stage. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that this was the one that they put on the soundtrack, and you can purchase it if you want to. <laughs> so, for your listening confusion and complete revulsion, here is Tim Curry's version of Toxic Love, the studio version. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. Bye. Mmm. Sludge. Fox 
it love 